Hello there, Sir from 17 once again, introducing you to my Rage Nightmare Difficulty video walkthrough. One thing I forgot to mention as well on the last video, uh, the reason why I say this is one of the hardest parts of the game is I don't actually know if you die if you have to do all five of the challenge rooms again. I assume you do, I assume that's why you can't save, and that in itself is the reason why this is probably the hardest part of the game, because everywhere else you can save, you can pretty much make the game as easy as you want to make it. But um, you'll notice there that there was a, a slight pause in the gameplay. That is because when you pause this game, uh, for some reason, it completely fucks up with the textures and it can make it very slow to come back onto being, you know, the, the same fluidity as it was before. And you're going to spot that throughout the guide because I was pausing it when I was doing the cuts between videos. And um, I've tried a lot to trim out some of it, but the guide is far too large to go in and do every single bit to make it perfect. And unfortunately, I don't have that kind of time right now, so you're going to see little bits like that. Hopefully it'll not put you off too much. And as you can see, this is a, an interesting room. You've got to shoot this target to get the jackpot. I've never hit this last one because it moves far too fast. And you see what I mean? That looks perfect to me. If that had been Whacker's Blitzball fucking, you know, overdrive wheels, I would have hit that perfect. But on this game, no way. But just keep shooting him. The, the next room is the final one. There's two waves inside of it, but it's not too bad at all. And in the last video I was talking on about the, the, the fuck documentary, and there's some really fascinating facts in the documentary. Like there's, apparently the, the first recorded evidence of the word fuck in any kind of literature was in a, I think a newspaper report back in 1497, or, back in the 1400s, something crazy like that. And a lot of people had this misconception of the meaning of it, and they still do to this day, they believe that it's derived from almost this acronym that was used in, in olden times to, to declare the king had give you consensual you know permission to, to have sex and uh, it was something to do with the military so that it could increase the king's army and it was literally fornication under consent of king which is obviously F-U-C-K if you think about it and this was telling the soldiers that they could go around and just blow their loads in a bunch of women to try and get more soldiers for, for the king's infantry and there's there's this massive you know contradictory argument between between scholars and between people basically saying that this is absolute bullshit and then on the flip side this is complete and utter gospel and the the documentary itself did not disprove or completely prove the the point of whether or not this is complete you know bullshit or or factual evidence but it's something that a lot of intelligent people have pretty strong debates about and uh, I thought it was just really fascinating. And there's a lot of excerpts of, of Bill Clinton, of, of Nixon, and all these different U.S. presidents cursing like sailors. It's it's real cool. There's this super funny fucking uh, example of this children's toy. And what it is, there's this mother that complained, and it was in the news in America back in like I think the 80s or the early 90s. And it was this little kid who had cursed openly and. It was back when they were really trying to victimise, you know, foul language and the, the right to be able to say things in, in certain situations. It was just the the certain people trying to get this censorship act passed in, in Congress and what have you. And <laughs> it was this children's toy that used to laugh. It was this button you pressed where this thing basically just went, ah ha ha ha, ah ha ha type of thing. But at the end of it, it sounds like it's cursing and this kid had played with this toy so much that he laughed and then said this curse word and when they played it back they had to bleep it out but you could still kind of tell what it was and it was fucking hilarious uh, I'm just going to interrupt right now I'm trying to change my weapons but this game is a pain in the ass because it doesn't pause so the first thing I do is I put the pop rockets on on my shotgun and I start nailing the Kraken because these are explosive grenade grounds and they will kill him real quick so very simple very easy there you go but this little toy, when you press this button, it basically went, ah, 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 fuck you. <laughs> and it sounds proper like it says fuck you at the end. And this this mother tried to do like a lawsuit against it and shit. It was, it was massive, but the the official statement was, it is just silly laughter, we have not got any vulgar words in it, stop being such a tired ass little bitch, kind of thing. And it's just a really interesting documentary, and I would recommend anybody check it out, because it's got some super cool stuff on it. But... It's so fascinating that there's all these people trying to, to, to like, monitor and to, to, to moderate, sorry, not monitor, that's the wrong word, and just try and stop people from saying certain things. When 
I believe a lot of words, they only have power when it comes from context. I think you can use any word, and you can use any word in the right situation, be it some of the most horrific things that nobody dares utter because of the implications. It's all about context, and this program is fantastic for that kind of study. But there we go, we've just got the, the sponsorship for the Dusty 8. All we have to do now is go back to Jackie Weeks, and then we can enter the tournament and race for our new car. And uh, the Caprino's pretty good. It comes kitted out with rockets, it comes kitted out with machine guns. It's a pretty badass car, I like it a lot. And um, it's it's also going to unlock a bunch more races for you if you've been doing the races. I, I personally wouldn't do them on Nightmare because they're probably much more challenging than they are on Easy or, or Normal. But it's entirely up to you. If that's what you want to delve into, feel free to do it. It's just going to make you play through a little bit longer than mine. And uh, mine is as, strip, as streamlined as I could make it, and I managed to beat the game in about six hours. So this is not the longest of adventures. If you, you know, just go straight to the prize, no digressing. But it's still damn enjoyable and uh, a decent first-person shooter. This is by no means groundbreaking in any way other than the textures, which, as I've already mentioned, are a pain in the ass because when they don't load, the game looks like anus. But retreat all the way back to Jackie Weeks. Talk to him, get your sponsorship, and I will see you in the next video, guys, where we're going to be doing some mild racing and the usual madness. So thanks for watching, and you take care now.